The Heavy Knight is a defender class that concentrates fire on itself and takes a defensive position. But it's not as good as other defense classes. The tank's attack capabilities are quite low, even if you raise the level. And therefore, we can say that this is a flawed or cursed class. Every time the boy read or saw something from the distant past, he couldn't shake the feeling that he had seen this before. And today, as the heir of the Edoan family, he is going to take part in the blessing ceremony. And again he feels some kind of deja vu. His father encourages Elma because he is his child. Therefore, one must believe in the God of Swords. The priest begins the ceremony and turns to the gods, asking them to bless Elma Edavan with the class, and then uses his divine foresight skill. After all, Elma knew about it. Five years ago and even much earlier, even before he was born, that this world is a VR multiplayer online game that he played in a previous life. This world is the same as in the magic world. And if that's the case, Elma wants the class he's always liked. After all, the magical warrior has always been considered the strongest class there. And the gods heard his prayers. The first level Elma's status window displays her class. Heavy Knight. This makes him smile. Immediately, the young man turns to his father and shares the good news. But something goes wrong. The father's face is distorted. He screams, not believing what he heard. And he corrects his son, asking if he actually said that he received the Sword Master class. This reaction makes Elma taken aback. But soon the realization comes to him. Memories from his past life confuse the young man. Therefore, he completely forgot that in this world, the best class is the one that can be easily upgraded. But slow leveling and technical classes do not have a good reputation. Elma suggests that this is due to the underdeveloped class division. Elma tries to justify herself to her angry father. But he suddenly comes up and grabs his son's hand to see his status personally. What he sees angers him even more because Elma's status is weak in all areas and he doesn't even have a single attack skill. In the eyes of his father, the young man is weaker than a wooden doll. It seems that in this world, the heavy knight class goes beyond all bounds of decency. In a bad way. Elma asks her father to calm down and says that health and protection here are at the highest level. Still, it doesn't matter to his father. The man roughly throws his son to the floor, still furious. And then he swears and says cruel words that, fortunately, they held the ceremony in a narrow family circle, so no one will know about Elma's shame outside these walls. Much more than the well-being of his son, the man is concerned about what will happen to their family now. And the young man, mercilessly thrown to the floor, remains silent, stunned by this development of events. Blood drips from the corner of his mouth. Suddenly, the sound of high heels is heard in the room. Their owner attracts everyone's attention. The girl in strange-looking armor says that she was also supposed to receive a blessing today, and asks if she can do it. Her name is Maris, and she is a member of a side branch of their family. Elma played with her several times when they were children, but for five whole years they had not exchanged a single word. He assumes that it is because she belongs to a side branch. The priest is confused. Considering what just happened, he's not sure the ceremony is worth continuing. But the sullen head of the family, after a pause, orders him to start the ceremony quickly. For some reason, Elma has a bad feeling. Then the priest carries out the order, and again uses divine providence. Calm, Maris opens her status window. And then with a smile she says that she is a sword master. Towering over Elma, who is still lying on the ground, she mocks. Without any sincerity, she says that she is sorry because it seems that she took away his talent from the young master. This development of events makes Elma think anxiously. After all, if one of the side children receives the sword master class, this will give his father a reason. The bad feeling turned out to be prophetic. The head of the family immediately reacts to Maris's words and is now full of pride and cordiality in contrast to his son's ceremony. He says that the girl confirmed the status of the Edoan family with her class, and your own status too. After all, from now on, Maris is his daughter. 
and the true heiress of the Edivan house. These words shock Elma, as did the other aristocrats gathered at the ceremony. As the head of the family hugs his new daughter, she stands with a blank look, and then, looking straight into Elma's eyes, he calls the man father. Then she turns and addresses the young man directly, still respectful at first, but he immediately corrects himself, and with a face full of smugness, he dismissively declares that Elma is not suitable for the role of the next head of their family. He looks confused about this, but then his father supports Maris and tells his own son to get out of here, because he did not live up to his expectations and now he is not his son. The man shouts what a shame it is for their family to have a heavy night in their ranks, so Elma must get away. Kneeling, the young man tries to convince his father that their family needs a heavy night like him. But the head orders him to shut up and not show his face again. After all, after everything he did for Elma, he still turned out to be a disappointment. The young man is even forbidden to pronounce his own surname, threatening to deprive him of his head if he disobeys. After everything, Elma can only call lostly to her departing father. He didn't even listen to his son. He just gave me some money and kicked me out of the house that same day. That's why Elma is now riding in a simple carriage, cloaked and subdued. He gets to the city, where to find a hotel for the first time, and rents a room. Only here does he finally throw off the hood, and then he tells his father to go to hell. After all, he deprived Elma of her family, home and life. But he won't give up, because he has the strongest class, the heavy knight. But the history of this world, the climate, and even the name of the city of Rondrum are different from what was in the game. So Elma is thinking about looking into the matter. First, however, he needs to check his characteristics and status. Because if the technical features and skills of the heavy knight are also different here, it will be unpleasant. At the first level, he has three skills available to him. Heavy armor, increased defense, and basic fencing knowledge. Everyone's progress is at zero, but there are five skill points left. To Elma's relief, everything is the same as in the game. This is called a skill tree and means that there is an option to select the skill area that a person wants to use. The five available skill points are the initial amount that a person receives when identifying his class. With each level increase, one more point will be awarded. It is not an exaggeration to say that the path a person chooses will determine his destiny. The skill tree is divided into fixed skills and two types of skills that can be obtained randomly when obtaining a class. In Elma's case, only heavy armor is a fixed skill. This is considered to be the weakest skill in the entire heavy knight tree, and yet it is quite strong. It's just a little difficult to deal with. Firstly, there are many things that do not require a long time to use. Increased defense is one of the most useful skills. Although Elma will not be able to unlock new skills, he will increase his armor. Basic knowledge of fencing is also not as bad as it might seem. It can be strengthened using special items. In addition, in the future he will be able to upgrade through the skill tree. But still Elma does not do this. He has another idea. Invest all five points into the heavy armor skill. When he reaches level two, it unlocks the defensive wall skill. And for reaching the fifth level, the power of protection increases by 10. Now Elma is ready. So he leaves the hotel and goes out into the forest outside the city. Alone, he walks through the trees dressed in armor. A croaking sound attracts his attention. A frog-like creature, slimy and large, sits on the ground. It's called a wound, and Elma is going to check its status. The creature has the second level, seven health units, and three mana. While the young man studies it, the wound is preparing to jump. And then, with a loud croak, he attacks. Unhappy with the suddenness, Elma squints her eyes, but doesn't worry. Instead, he lowers his weapon and exposes his body, protected by a breastplate. Thanks to the defensive wall skill, only the monster suffers from the collision. Elm doesn't even need to look at the creature that so recklessly attacked first. His defense is not broken, but the wound flies away, leaving drops of its blood in the air. Finally, Elma exhales. His level rose to second. 
Despite his still calm face, this battle was a little difficult for the young man. The monster crumbles into black ash under his feet. The essence of the protective wall that kills the wound is that this normal skill causes an enemy who attacks in close combat within a certain radius to receive damage commensurate with the defense characteristic. A large stone remains in place of the evaporated corpse, and Elma picks him up. Even if second-level magic stones are cheap, it won't hurt to collect them. He is distracted from collecting prey by a sudden cry for help. An unknown man runs in horror, shouting that some people will kill him. The man is already out of breath, but does not stop. Noticing Elma, he asks him for help. And the young man notices that the runner looks like an adventurer. A crowd of wounds croaking loudly comes into view. Elma watches them determinedly. It is these monsters that are chasing the screaming adventurer. While he stops to catch his breath next to the young man, Elma is already moving forward, telling him to leave the monsters to him. At first, the adventurer doubts that the young man will really cope, but then he sees his armor and assumes that Elma is a famous adventurer himself. He confidently takes a step towards the monsters, and with the same confidence he admits that he has just raised his level for the first time. This causes the adventurer behind to open his mouth in shock. Now for him the situation looks like a joke after all, Elma is even weaker than him. And a beginner is generally not able to defeat such a number of monsters. But the young man is not going to back down. As the adventurer yells at him to take off his heavy armor and run away, Elma gets ready. And after the wound they rush at him. The adventurer closes his eyes, unable to bear such a sight as the brutal death of a newcomer. Elma still stands unflinching in the face of danger. And when the monsters get close enough, they all fly apart, crashing into an invisible wall. First alone, then another. The latter notices the danger, but cannot turn around in the jump. One by one, the wounds cut into the strong breastplate, taking damage. And in the end, Elma, who has not moved, stands in front of the rescued adventurer, an impregnable wall separating him from the scattered corpses of monsters. Amazed that the newcomer was able to kill so many wounds on his own, the adventurer asks, Who is he? Out of habit, Elma almost introduces herself using her last name. But he cuts himself off in time, and he calls himself the Heavy Knight Elma. Gradually, the corpses of the killed wounds evaporate. Elma immediately increases her level to 8 thanks to mass murder and also receives the title Rock Man. Now he reveals his status, and he sees that there are still no problems, the counting system here is the same as in the magic world. He is again distracted from studying the changes by the rescued adventurer. He introduces himself as Ares and says that he came from the countryside to become an adventurer. Ares rose to level 3 alone, but was told that they didn't trust him very much, and so he was unable to form a group. He thanks Elma again for her help, but he replies that this is of no use. After all, he managed to raise the level thanks to what happened, and then asks if Ares would mind if he takes all the magic stones. He doesn't mind at all. On the contrary, he enthusiastically asks Elma if he would mind returning together and forming a group. Ares thinks it will be great. After all, the defense class is not very popular, so completing tasks alone must be difficult. But Ares already knows that Elma is strong enough and is sure that everyone else will also want to get to know him better. Still collecting stones, Elma refuses. Ares feels bad about how indifferently he was rejected. Besides, he doesn't understand the reason. After all, in his eyes, it is very strange to refuse having the class of a defender. Even if Elma continued to fight alone, he would not be able to reach his maximum. Then the young man finally rises from the stones lying on the ground, and he only briefly asks for forgiveness. Ares is again perplexed, but Elma admits that he is right. The main purpose of the defense class is to protect partners from enemy attacks and take all the blows. But he himself wants to raise the levels. If she does this as a team, then the experience points will be distributed among everyone, and this is not what Elma wants. He also wants to earn items and titles with skills. 
the young man also does not know whether anyone will believe his words. Moreover, remembering the betrayal of her family, Elma cannot step on the same rake again. But Ares still tries to convince him. After all, Elma is really strong. But the way things are now is a road to nowhere. So he will spend his whole life doing nothing but hunting for wounds. Ares shouts that we must strive for something high. But something catches Elma's attention, and it's definitely not Ares' words. After all, he also freezes in confusion. A huge spider-like creature attacks them from behind with a loud scream. Ares is horrified because this monster should not be here. At this time, Elma grabs her weapon and gets into a fighting stance. He checks the monster's status while Ares tries to dodge the blows. The sharp paw easily pierced the ground where the adventurer had just stood. This monster is a level 16 lavender monkey spider with 31 health and 11 mana. In addition, this spider is twice as large as a normal one. Elma suggests that the monster used a stealth skill while Ares can only watch in fear. The monster has an immobilizing poison and it also has the skill of fire claws. The protective wall is almost defenseless against this spider. If Elma does not have a skill that will allow him to protect himself from double damage, he understands that there is no use in meddling. After all, if he does not absorb the damage from the fiery claws, everything will end for him in one blow. Ares desperately hits the ground and shouts that it was his fault that he attracted the monster. Trembling, the adventurer rises to his feet. Despite the obvious fear on his face, he says that he will fight the spider and Elma must run. Gloomily, the young man looks at Ares. And seeing his desperately trembling legs, he answers that everything is fine and then asks to be allowed to deal with this monster. Ares objects, saying that this is unreasonable, but Elma has already stepped forward. This time he disagrees. After all, this world is a game, and here it is impossible not to win. Still trying to reason with his savior, Ares shouts that the spider is not at all a monster that a beginner can cope with. He understands that Elma is strong, but it is physically impossible to win here. Only now Elma, ignoring the screams, reveals her status. For leveling up, he received seven skill points. Now they need to be put into heavy armor. Everything. Thanks to this, Elma gains the shake skill. It briefly reduces the attack power of the affected enemy by one level. This skill lasts for about a minute and takes away 20% of the strength, but if the heavy knight's attack is successful, the enemy's attack will decrease. And that's exactly what Elma needs to defeat the Lavender Spider. Now he is confident in himself and even provokes the monster, promising to deal with him. In response, the Spider Monkey screams. Then Elma takes a stance and dodges the clattering teeth of the attacking monster. He knows that high risks promise high rewards. And he believes that now is the time to test yourself. The monster freezes, surprised that its prey was able to evade. But he quickly turns around and screams again. Elma has to dodge a series of quick strikes. He thinks that he needs to understand the movements and skills of the spider, and the rest is nonsense. Finally, magic circles diverge under one of the paws. The monster rises and screams, especially loudly, the ground beneath it glows. And more magic circles begin to form above the mouth. The spider then spits using the poison light skill. Elma stands confidently before the enemy. A bunch of poison flies straight at him. The spider challenged him, and the young man covers himself with his hands, rushing right through someone else's attack, because he accepts this challenge. And in this gap, Elma hits back using shake. The wound crosses the monster's mouth and one of its eyes. This doesn't bring much success, but at least the monster gets some damage reduction applied. The spider makes its squeaking sound furiously and uses the fire claws skill. The tips of his paws change. Now, with a more dangerous weapon, the monster attacks again. Ares screams, worried about Elma, because he knows about the power of someone else's skill. Dust rises from the place where the spider hit with its claws. Through the cloudy curtain, you can see a human silhouette. Elma, unharmed, confidently says that the monster has already lost. 
the mana cost to create poisonous light is 7 units, and fire claws require 5 units of mana. Now the spider has only 4 units left. Therefore, Elma confidently rushes to the attack, again using the shake. In addition to the lack of mana, the spider also had 40% of its damage cut off due to two successfully applied shake attacks. And thanks to the title Rock Man, Elma's defense parameter increases by 10 while stationary. Now Elma has created all the conditions for his victory. The monster screams again. He is chasing his opponent. But then Elma suddenly breaks and turns to the spider and uses his skill. The spider crashes into an invisible wall. The protective wall throws him back in the same way as it did with wounds a little earlier. The power of the skill flips the monster onto its back. He's bleeding but still alive. However, not for long. Elma steps on him and says this is the end, and then finishes off the monster with one blow. Instantly, his level rises to 12. Four more skill points received. As the spider's corpse crumbles, Elma checks her status and sees a notification that he can no longer upgrade heavy armor at this time. He remembers this situation very well, but is surprised that such specificity of the magic world has been preserved here. Since heavy armor has reached level 15, Elma gains the parry skill. The fact that he now has basic skills satisfies the young man enough. But then Ares bursts in again running towards him. He admits that Elma is truly otherworldly. In place of the spider, a large magic stone shines. So Ares looks at the spider's remains as he continues talking. If he saw everything correctly, then Elma defeated the monster alone. And even though Ares was very worried about him, now he apologizes for panicking too much. Only after this does he notice that Elma was poisoned with a critical dose of poison. And without a doubt, he offers his help in getting to the city. Elma thanks him for this. In the city, Elma wants to register as an adventurer, and to do this, he comes to the guild in the city of Rondalum. Here he turns to the staff for registration. At the counter, he announces his name and level. In the end, speaking in class. With a polite smile, the employee confirms his protective class and accepts the application. She puts a stamp on Elma's file, confirming it. Now he will be able to join the Adventurer Society as an F rank. There are seven ranks in total from F to S. In order to enter the dream space, you must be an adventurer of rank E or higher. And the same goes for titles. There is a limit to the number of skill points that can be spent on heavy armor. Therefore, Elma needs to quickly advance to E rank. Remembering something, he reaches for the pouch on his belt and puts it at the reception desk. The adventurers in the hall suddenly pay attention to it and it is definitely not friendly. The two begin to mock the low-level heavy knight who wants to find the group. They know no one wants to work with such a piece of crap. Other people in the room join in their laughter as they watch Elma. Only the guild employee looks awkward. Even though the young man does not react to ridicule, he only silently glances askance at the slanderous people. She tries to correctly warn that not many groups recruit people to play the role of defenders, so it may take time to find one. Elma doesn't seem interested, but says she'll think about it later, but right now she has more important things to do. He opens his bag, and he dumps the collected magic stones onto the counter. Elma wants the guild to pay him for them. Now the employee looks surprised. He even asks if the young man really got it all alone. But he confirms that he hunted alone, and asks to take care of the stones. Only then does the girl get to work, still not sure that his words can even be true. For a large stone, Elma is given one gold, and the small stones are given ten with a lower denomination. While he gets his money, the same adventurers who mocked him a minute ago continue to discuss him. Now they think this heavy knight is cheating. But Elma doesn't care. Registration is complete and he has money for living expenses. This means that his experience in playing the magic world is beginning to bring benefits. The next step is to ask if the guild has any requests that he can fulfill. Awkward and incredulous, the employee says that of course there is, but not without nuances. 
As a result, Elma finds herself in a cemetery, surrounded by other adventurers. And an impressive-looking man with a huge axe loudly says that he heard that among them there was an adventurer who, by his actions, failed everyone's massive request. And then he turns to Elma, shouting that it couldn't be that a newcomer who hadn't even joined the guild could defeat such a monster, and that the adventurers are not so gullible as to believe in his victory over the spider when Elma is at the twelfth level. The man shouts that he will beat the crap out of him, and you can see from his face that words meet deeds. Elma is nervous about this pressure. This situation is definitely bad. But such massive requests rarely happen, so he shouldn't create unnecessary problems for himself. Therefore, the young man humbly bows, apologizing. The man frowns, looking at him intently. But then his face becomes less gloomy. He doesn't like Elma's presence, but the man turns around, leaving him alone. Instead, he orders Taylor to begin. She immediately reacts to Guten's order and uses the search skill. And then he reports about hordes of monsters, about 30 heads. Guten praises her, and the girl does not miss the opportunity to proudly declare her good skills. She then boasts that she almost made it to E rank, and notices Elma's gaze. Then Taylor approaches him and says that it seems that the rumors about his eccentricities and behavior are just that rumors. Elma doesn't meet her eyes, appraising her instead. Judging by her clothes, Taylor is a red mage. She has high physical abilities and attack magic. In addition, she has access to restoration magic and various auxiliary magic of a wide range. Continuing to mock, Taylor says that it's even a shame that someone else has such an unusual class. Only then does Elma confront her, saying that he likes his class. This causes the red mage to lose his nasty smile and show his real face. For her, such words are too strong. So she tells Elma not to try to take a bite that's too big for him. And let it be true that, at first glance, the Red Mage is a strong class. Elma knows that in the game they were known as jacks of all trades who excelled at none. But this world is not a game, so it is logical that easy classes will be more in demand. Finally, the situation was finally clarified. Guden announces that this time the crowd of afterlife ghouls is led by a ghoul head and all D-rank adventurers must hunt him down. And the rest of the guys should keep their distance and fight with someone easier. And even if they encounter dangerous enemies, they should flee. Elma listens silently to all the instructions. The estimated level of the ghoul's head is 30. He does not have any offensive skills, but he can summon the undead using the so-called breath of the dead. But with them is Gutang, a D-rank adventurer whose level is approximately 40. If they act correctly, then nothing difficult should happen. Nevertheless, there is a weak link in this squad. Those who are weak in spirit. One more thing. Two arrogant people. Elmer realizes that their chances of survival are greatly reduced because of this. There were enough level numbers in the game. But in this world, there are many more factors influencing the situation. Understanding this worries Elma greatly. So he turns to Guten, telling him to be a little more specific with his instructions. But he is clearly not happy with someone else's remark. Elma tries to explain that things regarding the undead hordes are not always exactly as stated. They don't meet until the worst happens. After such words, Guten comes closer to the young man. And he menacingly asks if he is telling him what to do. He also calls Elma a bastard. He is silent with displeasure. A heavy silence hangs between them. But finally Elma answers in the negative. And he speaks on behalf of all low-level adventurers that they are worried about this situation. So Guten has to tell them what to do. Once again, Elma bows her head. This makes Guten calm down. He doesn't like babysitting, but notes that he doesn't seem to have a choice. Only now, when everything is almost resolved, Taylor intervenes and denies that Elma's words apply to other D-rank adventurers. After all, the only person who is afraid of the small undead is Elma himself with his loser class. He ignores the direct insult, but with a very gloomy look. And Taylor continues to talk, about hoping that at the last second Elma won't get scared and start screaming. 
and that Guten would never behave like that. Pushing Elma away, Tayla turns to the request leader and says that she doesn't need to be told what to do. And if someone is scared, then they better run, because these people will only get in the way. In the midst of this self-satisfied speech, the hand of a dead man appeared from under one of the graves, and behind the hand are full-fledged dead, which Tayla doesn't even notice, continuing to grovel in front of Guten in the hope of showing her best side. Only when the leader begins to reach for weapons, Tayla turns around in bewilderment, and behind him he sees not only a crowd of dead people but also the head of a ghoul. This makes her scream. Elma already has her weapon ready, and Guten nervously grabs the axe handle. Then the ghoul's head lets out a terrible scream. Because of this, Tayla falls to the ground and screams in horror, trying to crawl under Guten's feet. But he only shouts at her, not understanding such behavior. Only after this does he call Tail and the swordsman who followed her idiots and orders her to follow him. He even has to hurry them up. And only after that those two finally get up and carry out the order. At this time, Elma stares at the club in the hand of the ghoul's head, and the dead who continue to crawl out of their graves. What the monster is holding is clearly not an ordinary object, and then everything seems to be under control. Then Elma shouts to those who have left to go to the head, and at this time he will take care of the rest. The other low-ranking adventurers are nervous, and one of them, trembling, asks if Elma is going to face so many demons. He doesn't even understand the question. The low-ranking ones talk about how even as a knight you can get hit in the blind spot, and how they thought about how Guten would scatter the dead but seemed stuck in his battle. This chatter makes Elma understand. The reason why the adventurers in front of him are so reluctant to gather. None of them had ever had to deal with a pack of evil spirits before. Plus, it looks so creepy. Also, without proper instructions. It is understandable why they are so reluctant to act. Because of this, Elma turns to the adventurers and asks them to listen to him. He issues instructions to split up in groups of three and form ragtag teams. If they cover each other, no one will fall behind and get stuck in the crowd of undead. The same adventurer who spoke first agrees to the plan. But he asks what to do if someone suddenly remains alone, and not suspecting that danger is already breathing down his back. The deadman makes a sweeping attack from the blind spot. The adventurer reacts to this, but it is too late. Still, he tried to grab his weapon and defend himself, even if he closed his eyes in the process. But none of this was needed, because Elma took this blow first and successfully parried it. This pushed the dead man away but he had not yet been defeated. After all, parrying only deflects an opponent's blow with a sword or shield to create an opportunity for a counterattack rather than attacking directly. Other dead men also began to approach. In a crowd armed, they rushed at the adventurers. But Elma parried the first blow, second, and even a third. In the meantime, he maneuvered between opponents, preparing his main skill when all nearby monsters are close enough. Elma is already waiting for them, and applies a protective wall, sending the dead flying. They are scattered without a trace. The other low-ranking adventurers are shocked by this. Elma then confidently explains to them that if any unforeseen circumstances arise, they must immediately inform their comrades, and he himself is here to help them. As a result, Elma continues to fight the dead in the cemetery. The adventurers are amazed because he single-handedly dealt with most of the zombies. Some even begin to doubt whether he is truly a heavy knight. At this time, Elma looks at the newly defeated zombies. His level has already increased to 16. He is pleased because the parry turned out to be even more effective than the young man thought. Especially at this level and with so many enemies. Elma checks her status again. He is pleased that he is confidently going up. The other adventurers also fight, and they win. But they are worried that there will be even more zombies. They all look at Elma, waiting for what he will say. But he is embarrassed by such responsibility. Time passes. The battle is still going on. The mountain of defeated dead is growing. But the adventurers are already at their limit. They were tired and out of breath. 
The good news is that the work is almost finished. Then Elma is asked if they will go to Guten. But he knows that the head of the ghoul is much stronger than all the low-ranking ones here combined, so he admits that it is better to leave this to Guten. At this time there is a battle with the head of the ghoul. At its peak, the monster swings its club trying to hit Guten. But he takes the battle seriously, and he holds his axe tightly, especially before chopping off a ghoul's head. Guten observes his behavior. He shouts at this stubborn ghoul who has not yet lost his spirit. But then unfamiliar hands touch him. The zombies climb on Guten trying to hold him back. But he just frowns. And with one movement he throws off the monsters. At the same time shouting to Tail and Paul. He orders them to take care of the corpses. After all, for some reason they just stand there. They won't get stronger if they are such cowards. Tail begins to make excuses, getting nervous. She doesn't want to get closer and get into range of the ghoul's head. This irritates Guten. While he is distracted by Tail and Paul, the monster already gets up and tries to attack from behind. But Guten notices this trick, and he dodges the blow in time, landing briefly after a jump. He immediately launches a retaliatory attack, swings the axe wide, and uses the skill of crushing stones. The ghoul's head screams in pain and there is a deep wound on his arm. But Guten remains vigilant. At this time, Elma comes running to the battlefield. He uses status score on the monster to assess the situation. He had 28 health points left out of 79. This gives confidence that they can do it. One hit from Guten should be enough for this. But zombies interfere with him and Tail and Paul are still inactive, trying not to even look towards the battle. Other adventurers have come along with Elma, and they are going to deal with the zombies. But Elma prevents them, giving the command to wait. Then the ghoul's head suddenly grabs one of the dead. He seems small in his boss's fist, and even less in his own mouth. The ghoul's head begins to devour the evil spirits he has summoned. Because of this, his HP bar fills up sharply. Now there are 60 health points out of 79. The adventurers are amazed that the monster has recovered. But Elma realizes that this is a corpse eater. However, something here seems strange to him. After all, if he were an ordinary corpse eater, then NK would use so many undead in one recovery. After finishing, the monster screams loudly. And then Elma understands what is happening but cannot believe it. Gitten is still confident in himself and believes that, although the monster has recovered, he himself is no longer bothered by zombies. He charges, shouting that they will finish off the ghoul's head. Elma tries to stop him, to force him to move further away from the monster. But the ghoul's muscles are already swelling. Teeth become larger and sharper. He changes beyond recognition, announcing this with a loud cry. The ghouls changed head screams, causing Guten to stop. She turned into a crazy head and at the same time raised her level from 33 to 40. This scenario is the worst of all possible. But Guten does not understand what happened. Now even he looks confused. Because ontogenetic evolution is a rare event that occurs under certain conditions. The main reason for this process is that the demon, when hunted down, releases its latent potential to get out of its predicament, and then uses new powers as weapons. Apparently the ghoul's head refers to this case. But the exact conditions of existence and evolution are not yet known even in the magical world. The situation that is unfolding here and now is just bad luck. Elma again shouts for Guden to leave. He's too close to the monster. But it's too late. The monster roars furiously right in the face of the D-rank adventurer. And the stun effect is applied to him. Then Elma tries to get Tail and Paul to act so that they distract the ghoul's head. But these two are hiding behind one of the tombstones. With a trembling voice, Thale refuses to help. After all, what can she do? If she attacks with magic, this monster will simply kill her. Elma tries to knock some sense into her. Because if Guten is defeated, Tail and Paul will definitely be dead. This means they must also help in this battle. But while he is trying to convince the adventurers, Guten is already receiving a powerful blow from the ghoul. 
This causes him to cough up blood from the force of the damage. Belatedly, Elmer rushes forward, while Guten falls helplessly on his back. He is still stunned and cannot move. But when the monster raises its clawed paw to finish off the enemy, Elma steps between them and parries. This is hard for him. The young man himself is thrown away. His feet skid on the ground from the force of the blow. But he doesn't fall. Now the monster is left alone with Elma. And he shouts that he will distract the crazy head and tail at this time must heal Guten and bring him out of his state of stupor. But she doesn't have the recovery skill. The red mage replaced it with an increase in attack power. Elma is not happy about this, but commands to take Guten anyway and take him to a safe place. Stuttering Tail still accepts the instructions and runs to the group leader who is lying motionless. The characteristic poisonous numbness skill of a crazy head is what causes paralysis. It is generally cured within three minutes. If Guten survives this time, then Thail will be able to put him on his feet. But this is how the situation would have developed in the game and they are in the real world. And there is a big difference between them. Elma stands ready in front of the monster, intending to do everything in his power. The level 40 crazy head's health increased to 94. Now they were left alone. Elma tightens her grip on her weapon. And he provokes the monster, shouting that he will deal with him until Guten gets back on his feet. The low-ranking adventurers who came here for Elma begin to flee in horror while they still can. After all, what kind of F-rank adventurer could stand up to such a monster? And if Elma dies, they'll be next. Now the monster and the heavy knight were really left alone. Now Elma compares her 16th level with level 40 crazy head. In such a situation, one mistake can lead to death. The monster breathes ominously, opening its mouth full of teeth and then he slams his fist straight at Elma. He manages to jump away. But the crazy head has a second hand, and the monster uses it to immediately strike again. Tense, Elma tracks other people's movements, and he parries in time to avoid the second blow. The force he puts in throws him far back. The young man demolishes the tombstone with his body. He wheezes in pain, but does not lose the strength to speak. Elma would prefer to avoid this situation. High risk means high return. The battle taking place now will use all of Elma's powers. With a smile, he thinks that if he doesn't give it his all, he doesn't have the right to be called a hero. Low-ranking adventurers in hiding watch the battle unfold. One of them doubts that this is an equal fight because the heavy knight who helped them is now fighting the monster that so easily wounded Guten. Another interrupts his comrade and tells him to be quiet. After all, they had a more fortunate fate. It's a miracle they're still alive. Bleeding, Elma still smiles and holds her weapon tightly. The crazy head attacks again, and her opponent dodges again. But the situation is really complicated. If Elma lets the crazy head attack him one way or another, he'll be in trouble. He won't be able to dodge blows forever. Therefore, he must attack the monster with checks and balances. Therefore, by unlocking status, Elma increases her initial fencing skill. Now he has access to the skill of hitting a weak point because he has upgraded his initial fencing skills to the fifth level. This is a technique of striking with the belly of a sword from zero distance. It easily deals damage even to an opponent who is strong in defense. And this is exactly what Elma needed. The monster attacks again with a loud growl. The young man parries the first blow, but it shakes him, throwing him back once again. However, he does not fall immediately. Instead, he spins his weapon and sticks it into the ground, thus helping yourself maintain balance. Then he slid under the monster, breaking the distance. Because of this, the crazy head begins to look around in confusion, losing sight of Elma, and he prepared for a new attack. Swung it and uses the skill of hitting a weak point. But this does not bring much results, only reveals the location of the young man. Running and shoulder strikes are the only skills due to the ability to jump on an enemy, even out of the sword's reach. It pairs well with heavy knights with their low attack power and strong defense. But Elma is not so naive as to think that this will be enough to defeat the crazy head. 
the monster growls loudly and once again attacks Elma. He dodges without any problems, as well as from the next blow. Elma says the monster is too slow. The monster begins to get annoyed by this battle. So, with a loud growl, he begins to punch his fist even more furiously. Confidently, Elma confirms that this is where everything will end. But his role in this is over. Then the crazy head notices something. But it's too late. Because Guten has already come to his senses and is attacking the monster from behind. Seriously using the dragon slaying strike skill. The axe cuts into the monster's flesh, releasing a fountain of blood. But it is clear that this is difficult for him. This blow causes the monster to fall to its knees. Blood begins to flow from his bulging eyes. And when Guten pulls out his axe, pushing the body away with his foot, and it falls to the ground of the cemetery lifeless. Alert, weapon at the ready, Elma stands over the body in case the mad head rears up. But he exhales with relief when his level rises to 23. Only then does he allow himself to sink to the ground and exhale. Guten is watching him. After all, Elma is an ordinary F-rank adventurer, but even farmers stand to death at the sight of a demon. Then the young man says that he has almost reached his limit and thanks Guten for his help. Silence falls between them. With a gloomy look, Guten looks at Elma sitting on the ground. And then the adventurer bows deeply and asks Elma for forgiveness. This surprises the young man. Guten admits that he was right about everything. Sloppy command and lack of coordination were responsible for this dire situation. Elma is really upset that they apologize to him. At this time, Guten turns to the corpse of the madhead, and he says that the young man can take the magic stone left from her. He doesn't know what to say. After all, magic stones of the 40th level are valued quite highly, and Elma would be very grateful if it were given to him, because now the young man is a little short of money. But he still asks if Guten is sure of his decision, and yet he insists that this is a reward for the demon that Elma dealt with. But then he notices that in addition to the magic stone, a shield remained in place of the monster's corpse. The item dropped by the rare demon surprises even Guten. Then Elma asks if this shield will be someone else's share. But he sharply replies not to be a fool because a man's word is his law and he managed to win only thanks to the young man. And yet a man's interest in the subject cannot be hidden. He suggests first evaluating the shield they unexpectedly received. The item is called the Shield of the Mad Demon, it gives plus 25 to defense, and its market value is 3 million. If you prevent an enemy attack with this shield, your own next attack will receive a plus 8. Such a high market value is a rare case. The protective wall can only be summoned if the armor takes damage, but with such stats, attacks in the range of one level can be almost completely blocked by the shield. But then again, at such a high price, Elma would consider selling this shield. From behind him, Guten also evaluates the item and wonders out loud at its value. When Elma turns to him, the man pretends that he was looking in the other direction altogether. Ignoring this, the young man asks what about increasing his rank. Guten tells him not to worry because he will tell the management that Elma is a good investment for the guild. Therefore, he will be promoted to E rank as soon as possible. The young man is surprised but definitely happy about this development of events. Then Guten laughs. The guild asked him to keep an eye on Elma to make sure he wasn't cheating. And as was necessary, he looked after it. Now, if anyone suspects the young man, Guten will beat this person to a pulp. Elma joins him in laughter. But then Thale intervenes in their conversation. Uncomfortably, she asks Guten if she can get permission for her own promotion. After all, he was able to get back on his feet thanks to her treatment. But the man's face becomes menacing when he addresses the Red Magician. He loudly declares that Tail is completely helpless in front of the monsters. In this state, she cannot be promoted. After all, there are other problems in the guild even without her. This hits the girl hard. Finally, Guten instructs her to fulfill requests and be diligent, to which she cannot react except by dejectedly agreeing. 
From under the brim of his hat, Tail glances sideways at Elma. But he just turns away, giving up and leaves. When Elma returns to the guild, it's time to receive her reward for this big assignment. First of all, the employee gives him 130,000 gold. Then another 200,000 for 10 magic stones. This amount surprises even a young man. And finally, the time comes for the cost of the mad head magic stone. Elma is given another 600,000 coins. Next to him, Guten laughs, noting that Elma has made a big pile of money this time. He assents that the completed raids bring in a fortune. The entire guild is watching what is happening at the reception desk. Awkwardly looking away, the employee turns to Guten and says that she really doesn't believe that Elma defeated the monster alone. The adventurers who were not involved in the request immediately pick up on her doubts. They are outraged that the young man has already brought a high-level magic stone, and this is exactly the guy who was suspected of fraud. And now they are wondering if there is something behind everything that is happening. After all, he is a heavy knight, a defensive class. How was he able to hunt so many demons? Elma does not respond to such accusations. But Guten is clearly angry. And he hits the table with his fist. He asks threateningly if the adventurers are going to interrogate Elma when it is an affront to their rules. Adventurers have nothing to say about this. Elma smiles at such reliable protection. Thanks to Guten, gossip about him no longer spreads, and the guild successfully promoted him to an E-rank adventurer. Now, walking along a city street, Elma wonders what he should do now. Now he has access to the dream hole, so he can try to get some money there. After all, the countermeasure with a protective wall will no longer work. This means we need to find a replacement for her. The Smoking Fang's skill book. This is the most important item for a heavy knight to reach his potential. Smoking Fangs and the Oath of Heavy Armor, only when these two skills are combined does a heavy knight become complete. The completed heavy knight is no longer a defense-focused class. Still, it would be ridiculous to call it an offensive class. This is a truly destructive class. Important items for a heavy knight, Smoking Fangs. Elma goes to the store looking for him. Various raw materials are sold here, and ready-made potions. Looking at the shelves with goods, Elma still understands how rare the skill book he needs is and doubts that it can be found in this city. So for now, he turns to the saleswoman and asks for three healing potions. She, bored, puts away her newspaper, and he asks for 72,000 coins for the goods. This price makes Elma embarrassed. It's a little expensive, but worth it, so the young man reaches into his wallet without arguing. But besides the purchase, he has one question. This attracts the saleswoman's attention. He asks where he can buy a mastery book, because I couldn't find them in any of the stores I looked at. She responds by asking if Elma really knows nothing, and he assumes that he is a freshman who has only recently started attending classes. This reaction puzzles the young man. It turns out that the sale of mastery books is prohibited. The person who receives it can use it for themselves. Otherwise, the Adventurer's Guild buys the book and resells it to the church or nobles. This information simply shocks Elma. He had the feeling that the nobles had become more powerful than in the game. But he never thought this would happen. After all, if so, then the skill books located in the city of Rondalm belong to the Edwin family, which has a monopoly on them. His family. Elma's suppressed silence makes the saleswoman understand the gravity of his situation. So she takes the pen, deciding to help him. After all, it looks like he really needs something. Something special. So the saleswoman draws something on paper. This is the route Elma will have to take. A schematic map shows where he should go. Elma accepts the map, but asks what this place is. They answer him that this is a store where goods are sold. Then he realizes that this is a store for items from dead adventurers. Out loud, Elma asks if they shouldn't report such items to the Adventurers Guild. But the saleswoman, who has already returned to the newspaper, replies that this is an unspoken agreement. The Adventurers Guild knows about the existence of these black market shops and they leave them alone. Some adventurers cannot survive without doing the work of gatherers. 
and even if proper measures are taken, the money will not go to the families of the victims, most of it will end up in the pockets of the nobility. As for skill books, nobles take them at low prices and stockpile them, even if they don't use them. The shopkeeper's hands tremble as she speaks hatefully about the nobles who don't know what adventurers have to go through. Her words make Elma darken. In this life, he became a very naive person. If he had not recovered his past life memory and chosen to become a heavy knight, he would have become one of those nobles. Finally, the saleswoman tells him not to tell the important guys about this store. And after a pause, Elma promises. Then he follows the route provided to him. And finally, he walks into the right door. The room is filled with smoke, forcing the young man to close his nose from the threshold. There really are different goods lying around. Materials and weapons. Shields and clothing. But he has doubts about whether there is a skill book in such a place. Until Elma notices something. There is one of these right in his line of sight on the top shelf of the rack. More precisely, five at once. An elderly woman speaks up, attracting Elma's attention. She says that grimoires are not for beginners like him. But the young man replies that he has money, so he wants to see the skill books available here. The old woman allows him to look, but tells him not to let go of his hands. After all, they cost a fortune. Elma apologizes and takes the first book. This is an archer skill book, and its market value is two million gold. This is 50,000 more than it was in the game world. The old woman tells him that the book is actually worth 3 million, which causes Elma to scream in shock. The owner justifies everything by saying that they are taking a risk here. The authorities pretend not to notice this store. But if it becomes known above, she will be beheaded. But this is only a basic skill tree for beginners. Tense, Elma muses that even if he successfully sells the mad demon shield, he will still have three million gold left. He doesn't think he can buy a rare book on craftsmanship. Some time passes like this. Elma goes through all the available skill books. He has already studied four. Elemental Archery, Magic Boost, Surprise Box, and Elemental Guardian, there are a few rare items here, but nothing of what he's looking for. It's time to evaluate the last remaining book. And this turns out to be something unexpected. After all, Elma holds in his hands exactly what he needs. A real jackpot. Heavy Knight Basic Skill Tree. If he has this book, everything will be ready. The old woman is surprised that the young man in front of her is so pleased. Definitely weird for wanting something like that. Awkward, Elma approaches the store owner for a price and she, not missing her chance, asks 50 million for this book. This amount leaves the young man speechless. He sighs resignedly, and he asks how she can place such an expensive product here without security. The old woman dismissively suggests that he try to take away this book if Elma considers it weak, and he says that the last time such an attempt was made, she defeated five at a time. Then Elma asks to keep this book of skills from going on sale, promising to return with 50 million. But the old woman asks what benefit she gets from this. Like a person who does not know the laws of the market at all, Elma hesitates, not knowing what to say. Then the old woman says that she likes young men like him, and he agrees to put the book down. Elma rejoices, but too soon. After all, after another puff with your pipe. The old woman says that she will take a premium of five million for this. This makes Elma look down again, surprised by the efficiency of the old woman in front of him. Now he will have to think for some time about how to pay for this book. He reflects on his goal of 50 million plus an additional five million. This amount is equivalent to about 60 raids like the last one. Sighing, Elma thinks that the senior adventurers and the shopkeepers who work with them have clearly lost their sense of money. Smoking fangs is a rare skill tree. But the only ones who need it are heavy knights or real combat berserkers with the desire to destroy themselves. A more obvious and stronger skill book will cost much more. Elma will have to come up with a more concrete plan for the future. Plan 1. Target the rare dream hole and get rich quick. But this plan is quickly abandoned because the heavy knight does not have enough skills to consistently deal damage. 
the second version of the plan, you will have to focus on the protective wall. But this won't work either, because it will take too much time. Plan 3. Buy beginner fencing or other skill books and train them. However, such a plan is also no good, because Elma will stop using these skills when she receives smoking fangs. Besides, he doesn't want to waste skill points. We have to keep thinking. He knows he's not the most popular heavy knight in the world, but he thinks he's already made a name for himself thanks to some big orders. If he can team up with other adventurers, it will open up a whole new range of strategies. Therefore, Elma thinks about companions, and he is going to find allies. The neighboring street is filled with noise. An unknown team is passing by. One of its members rejoices, saying that he did not think that the bloody sword could drop. This person is happy that he can live off him. A clown girl named Lucy happily declares that all this is thanks to her skill, clearly wanting to be praised. But her companions silently walk ahead. Then she continues to joyfully repeat that they succeeded. And Elma, watching the trio, is surprised by the composition of a swordsman, a thief, and a clown. At this time, the swordsman turns to the clown and disdainfully says that her contribution has been too little since they fell into the hole of dreams, and that he doubts that they actually got the sword thanks to her skills. Awkward, Lucy says it's a good joke. And then he emphatically assures that if they go there more, they will notice a difference. But still, the swordsman's attitude does not change. He asks Lucy if she really thinks she can count on a share of the sword because of her weakness. This causes the clown to become confused, and begin to amusingly explain that she, too, is fighting on the front line for her life. So he asks for at least a fifth of the proceeds. She would be happy with that at least. But the swordsman doesn't look happy. He cruelly says that even though Lucy is fighting for her life without any real attack skills, the problem is that she can only defuse attacks, which means it's useless. This makes the girl dejectedly press her head into her shoulders. She clenches her heads and tensely says that her lack of offensive skills is the result of the fact that it was this swordsman Klein who asked her to level up another skill line. But he does not react to such an accusation. Then Lucy nervously shouts that he always says such things as soon as he receives a large sum. And according to the clown, this is quite cruel. Klein squints in displeasure. And then he slowly moves closer to the girl. She freezes in fear, already regretting what she said. Then the swordsman with a creepy face, as if not seeing a person in Lucy, asks if she heard him. After all, he just made a few suggestions but it was the girl who distributed the skill tree. She did all this? Lucy turns to him in confusion, trying to stop such cruel words. A gloomy atmosphere hangs over the group. Elma, unwittingly eavesdropping, realizes the problem of misallocating points in the skill tree and dividing up large sums of money. They often encountered a similar problem in the magic world. He himself distributed skill trees based on compatibility in the group, but then everything changed and it became meaningless. At this time, Klein casually throws 100,000 gold onto the stones of the street right in front of Lucy. This is her share. After all, she said that this would be enough. Therefore, I must pick them up and leave. But the clown is scared and silent and just looks at the scattered coins. Klein continues to press her, saying that he made a lot of efforts to include the girl in his group. And she can't believe she's so blinded by this shiny little award that she's going to show her true colors. He states that this is simply disgusting. And Reese turns to the thief for confirmation of his words. She is silent at first, lowering her gaze. She is only interested in the sword in Klein's hand. So she casually agrees with him. After all, they cannot allow the precious piece that they got to be divided so irrationally. Lucy awkwardly tries to justify herself, saying that this is not what she meant. She bows deeply and asks for forgiveness from Klein and Reese, saying that she does not need money from the sword. The horror is clearly visible on her face, she promises not to do this again, says how sorry she is. But the former comrades simply turn around, and the swordsman cruelly wishes her luck in the new place. Elma mentally comments on the scene he witnessed. Money is always a source of contention, 
and the skill point system is very cruel. Due to the nature of the system, if a person does not hunt demons of the same or higher rank than himself, he cannot level up normally. But if a person has a bad combination of skills, it is difficult for him to fight against an opponent of even the same rank. In this case, it will be very difficult to increase your level. Elma wonders if the clown was pumping up the skill tree for a weapon system she didn't need. But then he remembers the swordsman's words that Lucy's contribution has become too small since they fell into the hole of dreams, so he doubts that the good sword was obtained thanks to her skills. This makes Elma think about a specific skill line. Because of this, the young man takes off. And although he is sure that no one would kick out a person with such skills, this remains the only option, given everything he has heard so far. At this time, Lucy is already desperately running after her departing teammates and loudly asks for forgiveness for her selfishness, repeating that she does not need money. All she asks is to be allowed to stay in the group. But Elma grabs her hand, stopping her. This surprises the girl and when a young man unknown to her also asks her to work in a group. This makes you even more scared. Lucy loudly asks who Elma is, 